Michael podcast. Bring it, friends. Yeah. All right, and we're live on the Regal podcast. <laughs> it's just myself today. Eric's still having a few car problems, but the guest that we have today is a a really a really cool and nerdy dude that I I definitely follow a lot. He is the host of the Nerd News, which is also called the Nerd News Network. If you go to their YouTube channel, if you want to know more about this this young man, his name is Tyson Cox, and he is a great comedian, a great podcast host, and his album Dad Water is out now everywhere. So what's up, Tyson? Yeah, that's me. I sound cool as hell. <laughs> How we doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many people that they say man when you introduce me it makes me feel like i'm walking out to like fight somebody yeah, it feels good it feels good, good. It it feels good? good? I, all right yeah. that's that's my whole yeah. intention though that's literally my yeah. whole thing that's like literally my whole intention. Com yeah comedy's great it's my favorite job but a lot of it's just like driving to iowa so when you have someone be like he does this he does that i'm like ooh, i do do that yeah but there's so many things that you probably do like I, I always feel like, as I have friends who do comedy like way more professionally than I do, there's so many more things that you got to do as a comic, like the writing, the editing. You know, oh, nowadays yeah. with the internet, like if you don't have a podcast, like nobody really gives a fuck about you. Like, yeah. it's so weird to me, dude, that we're in this space, though. But it's, it is unfortunately what it had, it's what you have to do now. Like, because I remember back in the day, you went on Carson and you got put on the couch, you were made. You got you can get made off five minutes back in the day. Now you gotta have a podcast, you gotta have a YouTube channel, you gotta do TikToks, you got and it's fine. I'm not mad about it. Yeah. It's just the I've learned a ton. I've learned graphic design, editing, I have script writing, how to burp quietly Bless away you. from the microphone. Uh <laughs> but yeah, it's it's I like learning stuff, so that's not my I'm not mad about it. Like I've yeah. learned how to produce shows, I've learned audio video stuff, like I know, I know a lot of comics aren't happy about it because it is not as fun as telling jokes, but I, that's the, free, that's the, I do that for free. It's the travel and all the other stuff that I yeah. try to earn the money on. And that's the other thing is like, a lot of it is just a byproduct to drive traffic to mm -hmm. you. like, that's, that's one of the things that I like about comedy is I like to look at the business side of comedy. And one thing that I've come to realize is like, is like it's it it's so much more than just telling jokes like if that's what you want to do that's cool but at the end of the day like if you want to be selling out and this is just an opinion from someone that's very uninformed obviously because mm -hmm. we could talk about languages and i can school you we can talk oh, about yeah. jiu-jitsu and i probably I barely know. know english so yeah <laughs> i'll tell you what dude uh reading english is harder than spanish to me English is a garbage language. <laughs> no, no, no. Structurally, it is. Hey, like, yeah, I could say Buffalo, 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 and that's a legitimate sentence in English. It's the animal Buffalo from Buffalo, New York. Then There's you a thing you can Buffalo. They Buffalo another Buffalo from Buffalo. So it's yep. five. That's a real sentence. It's not very useful, but it's technically correct. English, garbage language. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of like little pockets too. Like I love when I hear people talk about how, uh, well, there's Mexican Spanish, then there's this Spanish, and like some mm -hmm. people are like that's racist. I'm gonna tell you right now, dude, it's not. Because if I go to Boston, right, and I say, mm -hmm. "Yo, give me the car," it's like, are you talking about the card? Or are you talking about the car? Or are you talking yeah. about the credit card? Like, yeah. what are you talking oh, about? It's the same in Spanish. So, like, if I walk up to someone from from a different nationality or not even necessarily down to a different cultural background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, in Mexico, they they call soda gaseosa, which translates to bubbly. Oh, okay. I've never heard someone call soda bubbly in the U.S. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're, we're brand loyal. Give us a Coke. <laughs> That's the South. Give me that Coke. <laughs> oh, uh, dude. No, it's, yeah. it's wild, man. It's the same with comedy, though. Everybody has has something that I feel like contributes what I love about about your stuff because I <laughs> watch your 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 recordings a lot and your takeouts is yeah. the the level I don't know if you write it out right talking about your your podcast nerd news mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the things I like is first of all how the fuck do you get so much stuff that's useful like nerd news wise like how do you do that because so I just I read get... IGN all the time 
so me and my it's my buddy Tyler. Um, he was a newer comic, but he was like, dude, what if we did uh, a live? What if we what if we did a podcast of D and D? And I was like, cool. So we started to work on that. And while we're working on that, he had another idea, which ended up being nerd news. So he scrapped the D and D, started doing this because we were just talking, and every day we were just talking about some other thing that came out, like in the culture and, and we were, and we were like bro he was like what if we did a new show and immediately i was like yeah that's infinite it's infinite content it really yeah. is because there's slower seasons but there's always movies coming out there's always a new show coming out there's board game board game video game like uh magic the gathering has is they released i think they're gonna release like 30 sets of cards or some obscene number this year yeah the the new the new set that's probably gonna be I mean, they've been recycling a lot of cards lately. My my yeah. black deck from 2015 is worth nothing now. So yeah, it's we actually talked about how what Hasbro is doing with Magic on the podcast. And it's it's because I've, I've been playing off and on since like 2003. What are they doing? If you don't mind me asking, I'm I'm unaware. I haven't played <sighs> Magic in two years. Oh, okay. So they're they they are trying to get a newer fan base by releasing more childlike sets, which is like Unfinity, and they want you to actually put stickers on your card. Like physically put like no yeah like see that's the I heard that and I was immediately the mad. The fuck did you say to me? You want me to do what to my collectibles? Put stickers on them. Put little stickies. Okay, okay, hold on. We, let's let's <laughs> oh, hold on. I need a sip of coffee. Hold on. But is it for like <laughs> to count like my? It's, okay, why are they putting stickers? So it's they started to do a little bit of this in previous sets where it was like. You would write something on your card, which I also got backlash, but it's just to denote what the card is instead of printing up like four of the same card that's like one, say, was like, you know, one's extra tack, one's extra this, one's extra that. It's just you put a sticker over that marker. That way, you know, it is the. See, I agree. You don't have to do that. Just put a mark, put a token. Like, yeah, I was going to say, what what's the sticker? I feel like they're doing that. I f and this is just my nerd conspiracy mm -hmm. brain theory brain is i feel like they're doing that so it devalues the card yeah uh ruin it will ru ruin yeah. the resale and it yep. also uh it's good for kids to get kids into it because kids love stickers yeah uh and they and the the set is more childlike the art's more whimsical which i remember back in the day the art was like creepy and unsettling now yeah. everything is like much more polished which looks cool but they're also doing um these things called secret layers which has it's like magic cards that have like different tie-ins like there's a godzilla one there's um uh transform like the uh warhammer 40k which both of those are kind of dark so that kind of fits the theme a little bit yeah but then they're doing uh they just did transformers which is weird and uh their uh fortnite is coming out with magic yeah, and fortnite has a they they licensed uh gerald of rivia for i think a year yeah, yeah. I think and, they, they license, which the Witcher update is coming in three days. Yeah, I know it's coming out. The 13th. I'm such a, I'm so, I never, I never got, I, I like the story. I couldn't get in the Witcher. I couldn't get past the guy's voice because it was like, oh, I'm Gerald the Riviera. You're a Witcher, like, Gerald. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I, I do. I like yeah. I love that voice, though. That's funny that you don't like it. It's, I don't know why. It just, it sounds like, Oh. No, it's it's not like no. It's more like mm, girl, no. like something like something like that. I like yours, yours I like it. I like the Witcher. Yeah, his, like I don't know. I I just his, his... I don't know, man. <laughs> I've never heard someone say that Carol's voice looks weird. Sounds weird. It's nasally. <laughs> it's like a gravelly nasally. It's no, oh, I'm Gerald. <laughs> I have a sword for monsters. <laughs> I guess I'm turning into moss from uh, IT crowd. Oh, fuck. Hello, that's, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> like, you sound like moss. Boy, guys, oh, you gotta God. start. You gotta start a spelling bee competition. By the way, most uh, people don't know about that show. Can you believe that? It's. I. I mean, I get. It's. It was such a time capsule because I found it's it so like. Good. good. The the episode when no one knows what the internet really is and there's a <laughs> box. It's so perfect for the time for the time it was. It was people were like, "What is the <laughs> internet?" My favorite thing is is when my favorite episode, which I think a lot of people love, is um, the spelling bee one. The the one where he goes not the spelling bee. He goes to this competition. It's like a teapot, 
and you have to like they give you like letters and he has to like come up with a word and uh Moss goes and he he wins all the way and then he gets invited to this club where he's like these hot oh hot chicks yeah, yeah. and he's like he's like I'll have a, I'll have some milk please and he's like what do you have oh, I'll have a beer and everybody like Ehr? yeah like, go <laughs> get him a beer <laughs> and then he gets challenged to to a game of street uh street spelling or whatever yeah. and it, the the episode is just so wild to me I lo- I love that's what British comedy is really good at is just being very off, like yeah. very offbeat. Yeah. Uh, like, what's the name? Monty Monty Python. Oh yeah, Monty know, Python. Great, yeah. Great example. Um, oh. The like, the other one is uh, there's what, another Benny comedy Hill? show. Yes. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Mister Mister Bean. Oh, Mister Bean. Yeah. Mr. Bean. That's very what? out there. Good, what a, an amazing career he's had. He says no words, and he was one of the funniest, highest ranked comedians of all time over there. Bro, it's it's wild to me. It's so wild. And he literally, like, I seen, I don't know if you've seen the, there's a couple of interviews of him that he's explaining, like, the process. And he he took a lot of inspiration from the the character in the 1920s. Um, what's his name? That used to do silent movies, had the mustache. Charlie, Charlie Chaplin? Charlie Chaplin, he took a lot of inspiration yeah. from that. And I was like, yeah, but like, I don't think that that would work nowadays. My God, bro, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, God, he was on an interview when he was talking about how uh, he was talking to someone in the train and they're like, you look like Mr. Bean. And he goes, well, actually, I am Mr. Bean. And the guy was like, no, you're not. And so he's like arguing with the guy who's like, you're Mr. He's like, what am I doing? <laughs> but that happens to um, Tony Hawk a lot, apparently. Oh yeah. Hey, you look, you look like Tony Hawk. <laughs> yeah, so I think there's a whole... Yeah. Whatever whatever is he doing nowadays? Probably dealing with a guy in TSA that doesn't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, was... Those are great. Dude, Tony Hawk, I grew up like skateboarding and then the the games come out and then to hear that Tony Hawk's actually like a pretty cool dude. It's like, "All oh, right, nice." Yeah, it, he's definitely had a an interesting an interesting life. Like from mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. wanting to skateboard, he he used uh, I don't know if you've seen the Rogan interview he did. No, I think, I I think it was Rogan. Yeah, he did one with Rogan where I believe he was telling him. I want to make sure I'm right on that. He was like telling him that the first time he got like a large check, like he bought a house for his family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, he, you imagine? He, he was 17 at the time, so he actually couldn't yeah. buy the house yet, which is yeah. like that's and then to stay like humble and cool the whole way through, because like he'll. Um, I love the as a sense of humor too. Like he'll roll down his window and he'll do a kickflip at kids skating. <laughs> uh, but he'll also those. do a kickflip. Ah! And he's like, "Oh, he did yeah. it! Yeah, 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 uh, yeah good he'll, one." He'll, he'll give boards out and stuff to kids. Yeah, like he'll randomly anytime... like show up too. Apparently, to like parks and stuff. Yeah, dude, just love skating. It's, it's I, so wild. I, I think what's crazy is like I used to be surprised when celebrities were bad people. Now it's the opposite. Now I'm like, oh, there's still a good dude. Nice. Like it's flipped. Like the culture of like, I don't know, the people that are on TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's well, it's it's one of those things. Like, um, it's one of those things that when you when you meet people, like I'm I'm pretty close friend, not close, but I'm I'm cool with um with uh, Ian Edwards, and like I I text Ian a lot, and like I make fun of him for being vegan. He makes fun of me for being brown. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that seems what like a is. Yeah, it's a healthy friendship right there. And uh, I, I tell you, like, I see, I'll see somebody post something about Ian because he does like these bits with his his homie uh, Paul uh, called like roommates and stuff like that. Which I don't know how the fuck that hasn't been picked up. Have you ever seen these on that uh, no. Ian Edward does? You have to follow them. There, it's just Ian Edwards, and you'll see uh, the roommate, and it's basically him tormenting Paul. Like he, there's a skit that he does where he's like, um. He's like, hey man, I uh, I hope you don't mind, but I smash your girl. And he's like, what the fuck you mean? This is the first serious relationship I had. He goes, yeah, I saw her on Hinge and we hooked up, but I did you a favor because now you know that she'll smash a homie if she can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly Paul's reaction. Like, what the fuck? Smash my girl. And then yeah. he'll have one where he he was like running away from the. You ever seen the? Is this big old bl- uh black ball dude that he does skits about? Yo. 1-800, what's happening? He's like, you need me to whip somebody's ass? Just give me a call. 1-800, what's happening? So that guy walks in, and he he uh he's, like, trying to kill Ian or something in the skit. 
And Ian goes, Paul, you haven't seen me. You haven't seen shit. And he hides. And the dude's like about to beat him up. He goes, man, I don't know shit. And, and Ian goes, all right, man, you passed the test. Now I know I can trust you. And then there's a knock on the door. It's like, FBI. And he's like, 100%, you don't know shit. This is real. This is not real. <laughs> and he just jumps through the window. Like, it's shit like that that I love about uh, comedy. Like, I feel like sometimes we try to sensationalize things too much with politics and things that are mm -hmm, happening mm -hmm. in, in society that we're like, you know, have you ever had like a shitty roommate that you just want to kill, but you won't? Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's how I feel. So that's uh, I think all the most successful non outragey stuff is always like people relate to it. They see themselves in one of the positions like um, like I've had one one to uh, one Facebook reel go really well. And it's because people are like they, they're just commenting like, oh, man, I know this guy. It's Jeff, you know, and just because they keep commenting, it keeps getting pushed. And so more people are like, oh, man. You know, I, I fucking love to hang out with that guy, you know, and so it's just people I, like to I, see you look at the comments, you know? though. I try not to as much <sighs> anymore. I, I don't. I don't. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, I have a couple of like, so here's the other issue with like, there's so much comedy out there now, like parallel thought is a thing that a lot of people don't know is a thing. Mm -hmm. And so I have a couple of bits that are older than the thing that like came out on TV and I'll post it and it'll do well. And then inevitably someone's like, wasn't that on Key and Peel? Or like, I loved it when Family Guy did it. I'm like, I, this joke's eight years old, man. Like that came yeah. out three years ago. Like, but it just, you it's, can't it's comment hard. on it. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. It's hard. That's why I like, um, one of the things that I like uh, with, with my jokes, or at least when I write a joke, I try to write a joke about, because like for me, it's like, I, I didn't grow up in the continental US. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Puerto Rico. I was born, raised, and educated there, which is a territory, but it's completely different from being raised in the U.S., you know? Yeah. First of all, yeah. we, our first language is Spanish. So to me, it's like I draw so many jokes from, like, when people go, hey, do you know about – mention whatever fucking celebrity, bro. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Like, who? Like, I hadn't seen Top Gun 1 until three years ago. <laughs> I hadn't seen the movie My Girl. Until two months ago, when one of my buddies said, with uh Macaulay Culkin, nope, haven't even seen it. Don't watch it. Don't <laughs> fucking watch it, bro. My my guys, my guys at the gym were like, "Yeah, you gotta see, you gotta see this movie, My Girl. It's it's beautiful. It's about it's about love." And I wanted to fucking murder everybody in the gym because I cried <laughs> at the end of that movie, bro. Oh, but like, healthy. there's so much culture that I I've, I've I've missed that it's like. You know, like my first language is Spanish. One of the biggest mm -hmm. issues I have is colloquialisms. You know, like the yeah. the saying uh, "go go big or go home." Mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> what the? Like the first time I I, can't, I moved to the states, I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? Yeah, like go big or go home, like little things like that. So like, I've like had I some think. success, but it's hard sometimes, man, because I feel like these are jokes, like things that I say, like you know. Hispanic people with flip flops. It's PTSD moment, bro. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, I've, mm. I've, 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 I have friends. I understand the the, <laughs> I understand. the the. Oh no, I'm gonna mess it up. The oh no no. I have oh, brown no. friends. Say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I have brown friend. I have brown friend. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? Chalas, right? That's the flip chancla, flip chancla, 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 chancla. You almost had it. You almost had it. Yeah, no, the the flip flops. But that's how I've always felt. But there's so much stuff like I, I like uh, I don't know how, how you do writing, but one of the things I like to do is I'll look at like nerd news and I'll try to write jokes. But it's so hard to write jokes for like the nerd crowd to me. Let me see how I say this, because this is this is one of those things that it'll go viral and then we'll have emails. <laughs> So it's it's happened before, bro. It's happened yeah. before. Hey, I've it's got all engagement. It. It's all engagement, right? Yeah, 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 it's all yeah. It's all about you know. There's what's the old <laughs> saying? There's no such thing as bad press, I guess. Yeah, yeah. God, that's well, bullshit. Yeah, um, that's no, one of the things that that I I enjoy about like nerdy stuff is how and that also this also kills me. And I think you'll you'll be able to understand this as as a fellow nerd mm -hmm. is. How toxic some fucking franchises oh, can be, bro. Bro, it's insane. And it's so <laughs> with my experience. I see your face. Your face it, is like, oh God. It because it is. It's it's so a lot of people 
it's usually like the loudest one percent are the ones that are like, "This is terrible. I can't. Oh my god, why are they making this character black? It because it doesn't matter. Like, just I'll give you an example. Down. I'll give you an example. You're yeah. ruining Star Wars. There you go. Yeah, I mean That's, they kind of yeah. are, but it's only <laughs> it's because they're trying to do too much. It's not because they're like. Um, so we did a thing about that '90s show coming out, which is going to be bad. It's just going to be a bad show. It's you think it, so? It feels like it's going to be a heartless reboot. Like they just they're wanting to see it. Uh, but the thing that kills me is like in the comments, people are like, "Asian chick, black chick, Chinese chick." I'm like, "What are you? Why are you mad about that? It's it's the '90s. <laughs> like they're just mad that it's a diverse cast. Like wh why? They I've had a like hard time understanding that." I've it's, had like a really, really hard time. Uh, um, how do I say this? I I understand not to push certain things. Yeah. But I've never understood why people were. And again, this is just me. I don't. I read certain types of news, man. I try to avoid Hollywood news mm -hmm. as much as I can, bro. Because it's just yeah. it gets wild. You know, you start reading about Kim Kardashian and Yee child support. Oh, yeah. and like, I don't read. Oh, I can't. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't read that. But I. I think that it's just like, because you know the the video game and the the. I would say that the the nerd industry itself is worth billions because I know oh, the video man. game industry is yeah, worth more terrible. than yeah, like the video game industry is worth than FIFA, NBA, WNBA, and all that stuff. This yeah, is highest, like, Pokemon's the highest grossing franchise. Like, <laughs> did you see Pokemon. the meme? Did you see the meme that said God of War Ragnarok five million copies in a week? And then it's got like this thing, this thing of like the face of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Is that the mm -hmm. one that came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it says it's a guy like this with the face of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> and it goes, "Oh yeah, hold my beer." And then it's someone yeah. going like this, and it's like yeah. Pokemon ten million in twenty four hours. I was like, "Yeah, the immediate, immediately, bro." It does not matter. I I bought it. I can't. I bought it. I'm playing Which it. Once I'm done here, I'm going to hop back on. Uh. <laughs> I got a, I got, I got editing and stuff to do, unfortunately. I haven't touched it. I'm waiting for Monster Hunter to come out on Xbox. Oh, man. I, I wish I got into that more. It looks really good. No, 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 no. This is the perfect time. This oh, is the is? perfect time. This is the perfect time. And if you want to play, do you have an Xbox or a PlayStation? I think I have both. Yeah, both? <laughs> okay. If, if you ever log on, let's play. we'll play Monster Hunter. We'll, we'll play with you. But this new Monster Hunter is the one to do it because it's got um, it's got like web web stuff like the the fireflies you can use okay. it to like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's like it brings a different combination so like if you play long sword you can attack normally if you play like long sword you can only attack medium range and close range right mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. now it's like I can go up wait and then just whap hit your ass okay you know you can play a gun lance which a gun lance is exactly what. You think it sounds like it's a fishing uh, it's net. A, I got it. A hundred percent. Then you, you have weigh them down. Yeah, you have a switch axe, which turns into an axe, a sword, and then into a sword and a shield. That oh, you wow. charge. That's yeah, pretty bro. cool. Um, and then you have the great axe or great sword, I'm sorry. Uh great sword, insect glaive, light machine gun, heavy machine gun. There's guns in axe. Monster Hunter. Yeah, I play. I I play a lot in like if you play, uh, I'll send you a clip. I'll send okay. you a clip of me playing. Okay. Uh, there's a there's an old clip that I posted a while back of me playing, and it was basically uh, it, it was basically me playing against Kulvataroth, which is a a monster that's uh you have to you have to fight him with, with more than two people. You know. Oh, okay. It's more fun that way. You can kill him with two, but you gotta have really good gear. Yeah. And we I posted the video of it and. Basically, all you hear is me going, and he's knocked because you can knock the monster, and I have a build for it to to it's like okay. a knockback build. So yeah. it's like just me playing, and it's like uh, it's a timed mission. So if you don't reach to a certain part, then he escapes. And mm. literally, it's like I know that the time is coming because the monster does certain movements to let you know, hey, you're running out of time. Yeah. And bro, I literally like jump and I edited it towards me on slow motion with the gun. And I just smacked the top of its head, and it said, uh, you "Hit him like, with a gun, <laughs> bro." Yeah, you're, you're just, bro. And I hit him, and then it says, "Uh, so and so mounted it," and you can put um, like little, you can make it say like if if I'm getting healed, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're getting healed by someone else, I have a thing that says, 
like if you let's say you heal me right it'll be like have like army said spit in my mouth daddy and then <laughs> if, you, if you if you mount the monster i normally say hell yeah i'm on top of mia cut wait a minute and uh, it'll pass <laughs> right there like it's like it's like shit like that dude there's guns in monster hunter bro there's there's um yeah there's a light bogon there's a heavy bogon which has a shield and you can just you just hit the crap out of people with that you know I, man i i've only seen like clips of it where people get like the two swords and they spin up like the tail and up to the back of the monster oh, and stuff like that dual, yeah that's a uh, uh, dual blades dual blades okay. dual blades is 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 pretty 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 broken um yeah i will say that much dual blades are because you know it's it's all about how you play like if you want to play like a hit and take like a tank Hey man, go go play heavy bow gun or go play um, you know lance or gun lance or whatever. If you want to do a more like a movable style, then hey, go with the dual blades or go with something yeah. that that regularly will allow you to move. But dude, I tell you what, <laughs> there's there's so many things. Like the other thing is um, you have so many things that like you were saying earlier that come out. Like how do you find time to to be able to like grab all this information and then put it out. That's one thing I've been meaning to ask you. Uh, you don't sleep. Uh, <laughs> it's, but it is, it's so like, I'll like, I'll go <laughs> to find information. Like I'll go through Reddit. I'll, then I'll like do YouTube clips and stuff. Like I wish I had more time to actually like hands on play. Yeah. Uh, but that's why it's good to have uh, Tyler as well. Like he mm -hmm. actually, um, when God of War came out, we wanted them to actually be able to talk about it. So his, his job for like was to play the shit out of the game, just to play a ton of the game. That was his job. Like we needed him to play it. So you got to play it. Cause I wow. have, um, like I have shows. So I'll have to drive like, you know, I three hours to the show. So and then three hours back. So that's like, you know, half a day gone. Yeah. That, that Tyler travel you know, alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then it's, yeah, it's just kind of sifting and then just being in, the nerd world for long enough you kind of get a feel for things uh and i really like it because it's also uh basically writing exercise every day every day we write like a monologue joke essentially you know just i just imagine walking out to a crowd and be of nerds and just being like you see uh you see this uh, cocaine bear you see this cocaine bear trailer anyone anyone see this cocaine bear <laughs> based Bro, on I've, true stories yeah i've 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 that co whole thing about the cocaine bear when i read about that years ago i was like what like, we we someone dropped cocaine and the bear just yeah. ate cuz you know that's that's a pretty that's a pretty heavy story to swallow like just a, a bear is already terrifying a bear yeah. on cocaine is yeah a bear on fish scale just running amok god bro it's... that's terrifying I, that's terrifying I, I... They found it's they have the bear stuffed somewhere. I know that much. Like it yeah, is they big yeah. Bear. yeah. It was it was fucking huge, dude. And then and then you know that's that's the thing about nerd news that I like though about just nerd news in general is that one day it's like oh we're talking about the cocaine bear and then the next day it's like Ash Ketchum won the the fucking Pokemon yeah. Championship after twenty <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah after right. Twenty right? years. Yeah. First of all, pause right there. Yeah. Cause, Cause, let me tell you, I, I've been a fan of Pokemon since I was, shit, since the first episode aired in like 1999 or something, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I remember being 20 years old, and I was like, man, that motherfucker ain't never, never, never gonna fucking. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> he he's a 30 year old, 10 year old. It's crazy, but he finally did it. What do you think of that? What do you What do you personally think is 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 happening there? Do you think it's the uh, it's the um He's he's trapped in a dream because he got electrocuted. Do you uh, think it's just? Oh like, no! He, what do you yeah, think? he died that one day. It he, never he died that back. one day. Yeah. Okay. No, that's I what think, I think. <laughs> yeah, where it's all the fever dream of his dying mind. It's yeah, the uh, like... Indiana Jones five of. In... <laughs> Have you heard that theory when he climbs in the in Indiana Jones? No. The last what, what, one, what, what, the what, Crystal what, Kingdom. What is this? No. The, there's a theory is he climbs so he's on a, he's on a nuclear test facility for some reason and he climbs into a lead fridge and a bomb goes off and it you know in the movie it shoots him across the way and he lands and he climbs out but there's a theory that that whole movie is him just dying locked in that fridge like having a fever dream 
Uh, Ooh, Indiana. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And that's like, uh, and then people, you know, head canon stuff can be even like, well, that's why all the other movies are weird and bad. Or it's even further where it's like, oh, Star Wars is his fever dream as he's dying. <laughs> like, it's all this weird. Yeah. I saw I love one with Leonardo theories. DiCaprio. I saw one about, but that one made scary sense to me the way it was presented. You know the one I'm talking about where it's like he's in. There's one movie where, like, Inception, right? Where he starts out mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. water. And then yeah. there's a theory that apparently, uh, if you look at Inception, he washes up on a, on a, on a board. Oh, they're yeah. Saying, they're saying that it's Jack from the <laughs> Titanic that was just delusional, somehow survived, but oh, he has yeah. brain damage because of the cold. And I'm like, bro, you can't survive in that water for very long. No, like, you're not no. Wim Hof, my man. Like, no. that's no. not. It's Ooh. it's I, I that's one thing I do love about nerds is like how creative they'll be with for no reason <laughs> they'll just be like you know what these movies are connected this is how but, but authors are crazy like that though like if you look at a you know anime is a a, a great example of that like mm-hmm. anime is really a good anime will give you all the information that you need within like the first five episodes right like uh yeah. and spoiler alerts for anybody listening if you watch Chainsaw Man just tune out for the next three minutes. <laughs> Because I'm gonna spoil it. I'm gonna spoil the fuck out of it. Uh, have you seen Chainsaw Man by any chance? I have not. I like anime. Okay. I just don't have time. So yeah, yeah. Feel, feel free. Feel free. So Chainsaw Man is about this kid who grew up dirt poor, and he pretty much uh, has a demon named uh, Pochita, or po- okay. Pochita, or Pochita, however the fuck, however the fuck you want to say, it, depending the accent that you have, right? Fair enough. And basically, he inherits his dad's uh, debt to the Yakuza, and the Yakuza play him. They end up killing him, and he ends up absorbing Pochita uh, into his his chest, which Pochita is the chainsaw devil. Um, okay. The chainsaw devil, whenever he eats you or kills you, um, you, you do not, you are not reborn, right? So... What cracks me about Chainsaw Man is how honest the character is because you know how it is in char- in Pokemon. Great example. Uh, what is Ash? What is Ash's number one dream? To be the champion. To be the champion, right? Yeah. You know what Denji Denji's dream in Chainsaw Man is? What is that? To touch boobs. <laughs> I bro, I, bro, bro. <laughs> episode episode one. He literally goes and he's like, he's like, what is, what is your dream? Because dude, remember, he's this is this is the beauty of this character though. The character's mm-hmm. poor as fuck. He's yeah. never even had like jam or honey on a bread. Oh wow! And and yeah, 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 yeah. and and literally, I'm trying to I'm trying to find it right now to pull it up because I have to show this to you. <laughs> uh, let me see right here. Oh no, I can't play that on the show. <laughs> I just I just pulled one up and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, no, 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 one hundred percent. But that's all he does, Bill. That's what I love about uh nerd stuff that it's like it gives you that opportunity to go, oh, that's why this is happening. But you yeah. know how it is. It gets and you know, theories get crazy. And, and like I said, pe- people like to see themselves in it, so they're probably like, you know, what? I also, <laughs> I also want to touch some boobs. So yeah, I get this character, his motivation. Resignates yeah, they, with me. yeah, yeah. They have to like, they have to like really, um, put themselves in the care in, in the like the the. How do you say it? Yeah, like the shoes of the character. Like, yeah, that's exactly what I've always wanted to. And it's like, so I, bro, I gotta I mean, ask. I gotta ask. So I know anime has since like Studio Ghibli did the like the food really. They do always the food beautifully. That became a trend in anime. Mm-hmm. Is it like that? Like, do they make the boob touching scenes just like cinematic, or does he never get to? Here, let me show you this. <laughs> oh, hold no. on, I'm a, I'm a mute this. I'm a mute this. And if you're on Patreon, you can watch this. But hold on, hold on, yeah, because <laughs> you can watch. You'll be able. They'll be able to watch this on the Patreon. But on right. on everything else, when I clip it, I might, I might. Hold on, let's see, let's see which one I want to show. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Oh no. 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 <laughs> no. This one. This one. This one. This one. <laughs> well, let me mute it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, watch right here. See, it has her her measurement, her chest measurement. That's another thing that they do. What? That's her chest measurement. Yes, that's her chest measurement. It literally is like 70. This is Chainsaw Man. (laughs) No, I know, but the time is just coming and sitting on the bathroom. (laughs) Just watch. No, no, no. no. This is not. 
This is not bad. This is not bad. I promise. <laughs> well, this gets to, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they try to make it like food. I get what you're saying, where they try to make okay. everything like, oh, it's so succulent and so this and so that. Yeah. So, so that's exactly how how they try to make chains. Yeah, you have you can squeeze three times because she <laughs> saved him. Yeah, watch watch her reasoning. She is she he saved the cat from a demon. He that's killed good. a demon. That's that's good. and he saved her from from getting kicked out of the country. So you're gonna have three squeeze. All right, okay, bro. That's it. Three squeezes, <laughs> and I saved your life, bro. Listen, if I save your life and you're like, you can squeeze my boobs three times. I'm like, like I want four. I want four at least. Four, bro. We're gonna need. We we gonna we we shouldn't head it down to to how many times. Let's put let's put a timer like an hour or two. Like, but no, that's. That's the thing that I love about about anime is that they do wild stuff like that. Yeah. But then at the same time, they'll also tackle like real issues. Like uh, I was having this conversation with somebody uh, a while back on the podcast about how anime touches up on issues that are happening in the world that people don't want to talk about. Great mm -hmm. example. You know, Naruto, right? Yeah. You've seen Naruto, right? No. <laughs> okay. Give me an anime that you you've seen or a show that you've seen. That you enjoy uh, a lot. Ton, uh, ton of Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z touches upon how to not give up faith, mm -hmm. how to not give up on on yourself, and it touches up a, a little bit on racism. Yep. Uh, also, um, oh, uh, God, uh, with the giant monsters, the the humans, the Titans, Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is about political. Is it's, it's a political anime. Mm -hmm. It's about I, it's about power struggle. Yeah, I like that one because I like it for the same reason. I had to stop watching it. It's like every time you get a bit of hope, they just crush it. <laughs> oh, like, dude, yeah, yeah, because it's oh. it's a it's a it's um, it's like Tokyo Ghoul. Like, if you want to watch an anime that's gonna, it will it. If if you really really watch Tokyo Ghoul, right? Tokyo Ghoul is about human trafficking, uh, exploitation of labor, uh, and and individualism, because mm -hmm. the one guy he's half ghoul half human, but he doesn't fit in in the human world. Oh, okay. He doesn't fit in the ghoul world, and then they're always like rejecting rejecting him. Yeah. So he ends up realizing like, well, we're all unique. Like, just because you're a ghoul doesn't mean you're any special. You have a unique characteristic. I have a unique characteristic. And then the whole thing is just how he gets treated and how people treat you when you're differently. Like, there's some really deep subject is if you sit down and, and um, you know, anything. Like, some yeah. people say that Dragon Ball Z is just the story of how to... I heard someone say, it's about how you, you should live a life uh, as a warrior. And I'm like... I don't know about that because Goku has almost destroyed the universe more times than I care to. Yeah, he's also died a bunch. <laughs> That's yeah, not a good yeah. War so good warriors don't die. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, uh, well, man, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Well, it depends well, who you're fair. talking to, man. That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think so. It is. It is a. It it is a good example of how to live a life where you where you have good friends, you have good food, you take care of yourself, you take care of others. Like that's a good example. Yeah, like, not your kids though, because Goku is not a fucking parenting figure. <laughs> no, oh god, no. <laughs> like how he's just like I think he literally throws them at a bad guy at one point. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My thing that cracks me up is I go, man, if you like Dragon Ball Z and Goku's your favorite character, you a hundred percent do not want to have kids, bro. You a hundred percent are gonna no. go out and get milk and never come back. And yeah. I said that to a friend of mine. He goes. No, that's not true. And then on Father's Day, I sent him a meme that had Gohan writing a letter saying, thank you, Dad, for teaching me all these things. And Goku's like, thank you, son. And he goes, it's not for you. And he hands it over to Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I lost it. I was oh. like, you know, you know a good question that I got, though? What's Does that? Goku pay child support after he's dead? Because if you die, but you can be reincarnated with the Dragon Balls, like, does that mean that you would pay child support again? Dude. I mean, I don't. Did they get divorced? It's Chi Chi. No, she would be widowed. Yeah, she'd be widowed. Oh, Tyson, this is a deep conversation. I never thought that's, about this. That's an insurance payout. Oh my God! Don't do this to me. <laughs> oh God, that would be an insurance payout. How the yeah. fuck would insurance work? Uh, 
that's I love those questions when you start putting things that are like so basic, like reality stuff into oh, the thing. Wait a minute, is like, she is she is she widowed then? Yes. Does he have like to th pay three times th by the th same three guy? Times, which right? is wild. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he? What do you have to pay? No. It, so he if dies. you're dead and you wait, if you're dead and you come back, mm -hmm. would you have to pay taxes and stuff like that? Because technically, you're dead. Who the fuck is gonna know if you're? Oof. These are I questions mean, for Akira Toriyama and Sean <laughs> Jamel from from Dragon I, Ball Z. I because... think because I know the government, you'll end up having to pay taxes and back yeah, taxes saved, while you're dead. But he saved the world. But he didn't make that Armageddon agreement <sighs> from Armageddon when he's like, "We would never want to pay taxes again," <laughs> like that. <laughs> I I've been working on on a bit about Medal of Honor recipients. Mm -hmm. Because it's like if if you read a Medal of Honor recipient citation, do, do you just feel like I've done nothing with my life? <laughs> like when you read that, you're like, I am not a badass. No, I, then you well, read about the guys who are like still alive, and I'm like, what if if you get a Medal of Honor instead of all this money and all this other shit, which isn't that much in comparison? Mm -hmm. Um, what if we just say, listen, you'll never pay alimony, child support, or taxes ever again if you get a Medal of Honor recipient. Yeah, it sounds pretty good, bro. That's a, that's a, would you, that's would, you go, would you go would you go would you go to war today? If they're like, listen, Tyson, if you serve in the war for twelve months, twelve months you go to war. When you come back, no taxes, no alimony, no child support ever. <sighs> bro, Russia would be done today. <laughs> did did you just solve a problem? Yeah, I think you just solved the problem. Oh my god, yeah, I didn't think about that, bro. Think about that, bro. If you if you really want to end the war, just go to every single person that's paying child support or or. Owes child support or yeah. owes alimony. Be like, listen, if you enlist for a year and you go to war for 12 months, you will never pay any of these things, bro. That would fix repopulation, bro. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it fix ours. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's crazy. In the, 60, the po in the 60s, the population was like 3 billion, and we just crossed 8 billion last month. Yeah, but we're losing a lot of people left and right, though, man. Like, it's, it's wild to me. It's it scary is. to me. Like, it really is. Like, if you really think about it, especially, like, people like you and me who are in the in the stratosphere of, like, news and celebrities and gossip and all this stuff, like, bro, we're losing people left and right. Yeah. Uh, like, like, Christy Alley died at 71. Somebody just died at, like, 48. Like. Bro, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh. Exactly. creator oh, yeah. of Yu-Gi-Oh. He died young. Yeah, he, he did. Died, he died young as fuck, bro. You know, Which is, like that. It's insane it's because those, though, it's what's crazy is like those people have a well, at least a well paying job. Like being the creator of Yu Gi Oh probably has a nice little lifestyle, and then to die that young, like it, trying to save someone, bro. He yeah. jumped. He jumped in the water. I read the report. He jumped in the water. It was a, a, a whirlpool in it or something, and oh he got sucked in. Trying, yeah, yeah. People said that he was people always go with the suicide thing, but but I, I always like to wait. I always like yeah. to wait. I, ha I have yeah. this thing where, like, I won't talk about there's certain things I won't touch upon on the on the podcast unless I know a little more. Right. Or mm -hmm. unless I have a subject matter expert. Right. Yeah. But that was one that I remember when he because, dude, I grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh. Like that yeah. was like I used to go to tournaments. I used to I'll, t I'll give you one even better, bro. This is on my studio. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's great. It's not my studio, bro. That's where I put my my notebook and everything. And I remember when I heard about it, I was like, bro, that's wild. Because yeah. I'm pretty good with the the manga stuff like Hunter Hunter. I don't know if you've ever read that. No. I've heard no. about it. I've so, heard of Yeah. It's one of the probably greatest mangas ever written, well written. Like mm -hmm. it has a, a, a power system that is broken down to where I, I dare someone to find a, a plot hole. Oh, okay. In that, in that, All right? right. I'm, it's called Nen. It's called the Nen system or Aura. Mm -hmm. uh, like Dragon Ball Z, it's like, all right, who can scream the loudest? Yeah, power level. Like I don't know, he power hit, levels, right? He hit it for he hit it for a lot of it. And yeah, then took his heavy shirt off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love that. It's like, well, I never took my shirt off. Uh, yeah. I'm naked now. Now I'm faster. You know. Yeah. Uh, I Nen. Do, I, do, I love the trope of like, oh, like in Princess Bride, he goes, I have to tell you a secret. <laughs> I'm not left-handed. <laughs> He's like, I neither am I. They're like, what is yes, yes, yes? I love that so much. 
I love I love little surprises like that. It's mm-hmm. like um, there was a uh, there was a a, a manga the uh, My Hero Academia that I was reading mm-hmm. one day, and I I like reading manga. I like reading manga better than than watching it, but it's just because I don't know the manga comes out faster. That's all it yeah. is. Oh, if the yeah. anime came out first and then the manga, I'd probably watch the anime first, right? Yeah. Um, but I saw I was watching it and I'm looking at the manga, and I see that there's a drawing of another another comic book hero from another world, and then that started the conspiracy of oh well. Maybe this person's a hero in this place or whatever the fuck. You know, like when you find like an Easter egg in a movie of like Star Wars and it's like, it's in the same universe or in oh, the same yeah, dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, I, I love those things. That's why I love about video games, though. It's Man, just the, those uh, little Easter eggs. Because the people that design video games love video games. So I know in uh in the witcher i think it was they had like some world of warcraft easter eggs about having a like, crossborn in a cave i can't really? remember if it was the witcher or god of war but yeah it was like there's little references all over the place like borderlands 2 is one of my favorite uh video games of all times and there's a psycho like 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 sprawled out next to a computer and there's white paint everywhere that is clearly the scene from south park when randy uh that famous the with it when he jerks off, right? Like they just like it's everywhere. <laughs> like they put that in there when like, he was I in love... the in the camp because uh the internet went out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like I just they love it and they get like add little like nuggets of stuff in there. Oh, it's great. But, uh, yeah, like, cause... the Winter Wolf is a reference in The Witcher that is actually a World of Warcraft reference. Reference in mm-hmm. The Witcher Three. Yep. There's also a I, Game of Thrones reference in it. That's why. Oh, that's that's what I was thinking of the Game of Thrones. But yeah, yeah. Quest Sor- Swords and Dumplings is a nod towards both Kill Bill and the great Japanese culture as the character was named. Lindura Hasitori. There's also a reference to World of Warcraft Shadowlands and a reference to Game of Thrones. I'm like, oh, okay, wow, yeah. that is there- interesting. I I just because I'm replaying The Witcher, probably gonna mm-hmm. stream it. Oh, dude, I I love I love that game. I, I'm oh, not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Witcher Tyson. This is so cool compared. That's to a, mine. that's a, yeah. I sound so cool when I sat when I say it like that. <laughs> that's that's what you get, dude. With doing a uh, uh, voice acting classes, is you you get to like uh, try out all these different voices. Mm-hmm. And, like that was one of the first ones that I was like, I wonder if I can do. I wonder if I can talk like Carol. And I was like, Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's one thing I love about like uh, so I run a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, like I just love just being goofy with voices. What edition? Just, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, right now I play fifth, but I started okay. at three point five. But I've pl- I've been playing D anD D for uh, almost twenty years now. Like Jesus, I, I discovered D anD D eight years ago. It's fifth edition has been um, between Stranger Things and fifth edition. It's been a huge explosion in, in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. Cause I remember when I first started, I was 15 and I was in the middle of Illinois in a farm country. And so they're like, Hey, what do you like to do? I was like, dude, I've been playing this game called Dungeons and Dragons. And people are like, what is that? And then I'm like, well, uh, your imagination. Yeah. Me and me and grown men play pretend. <laughs> But, but now dude, it's, it's like, no, it's no better than explaining jujitsu, though. Think about it. Yeah. What's well, also like uh, sports is a big thing that I I think it's funny that like I I used to get bullied by jocks for like playing like Dungeons and Dragons, but then they'd be like, "Let's go Colts," you know? Like, yeah, that's your, yeah, that's yeah. your it's guy. The same, like, we're it's the same it's, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's what you love that. Like, everyone's a nerd about something. And now, Everyone, and now we yeah. have fantasy football, which is basically D and D. For yeah. fucking sports people, it's 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 just stats and chance. That's all it is. That's exactly what D and D is. That's exactly what that's, fantasy football is. That's literally that's literally what we're doing. And then people go, I can't believe it. Like my dad used to, my dad used to be one of those people that used to say that because growing up, I was always into anime and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't get this thing. It looks satanic. And I'm like, no. <laughs> like everything is satanic in Puerto Rico. Everything is satanic if it has yeah. any sort of connotation to monsters and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's. Yeah, dude. I remember I, I I have this thing where I always say, um 
uh, people people who who used to bully you for being a nerd and liking comics are now mm-hmm. the same people that are dressing up as yeah the fucking yeah. characters that it's they nerd just time, discovered. Baby. Yeah, it's the nerd time, baby. Like um, I live in Indianapolis and. While. Oh yeah, it's but yeah. Mo- like they realize there's money in it now, dude. Yeah, like yeah, Gen Con yeah. is the the biggest board game like convention. It's one of the larger conventions in the world. Massive. I love it. I love it so much because it, I love how non judgmental everything is. Because mm-hmm. like people dress up uh, as like their favorite characters. Sometimes they're just a furry walking around. You know, and everyone's mm-hmm. just like, oh, cool. All right, yeah. That's Wolf has boobs, but sure, man. All right, let's. Keep have you going. ever have you ever heard of a um? Oh God, this is someone you gotta have on your show. Uh, you ever heard of a cosplay deviants? I, I have yes, I have heard of cosplay deviants. I'm I'm I friends. Been... I'm friends with one of the the gals. If you want to ever interview her, she's she's oh, super that'd be sweet. Fantastic. Her name's Gemini Deviant. Okay, yeah, we uh, He's me and Tyler, sweet. we actually watched um, dub that hentai and went to the. Oh hentai. my god, no! Yeah, no, 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 dude, no, don't say this to me. So when we had her on the show last year, she was like, I was like, I'm like really shy when I interview uh, uh, and I'll say this on the show, I'm really shy <laughs> when I interview like like uh, someone that I've seen naked, oh. right? <laughs> it's but just you don't seem shy me. with me. Well, <laughs> well, Tyler, I was free balling before you walked in, bro. That yeah, way, you know, yeah, you could see yeah. the scar that I have because I'm sitting. Oh, I see. On a... oh, I see. We're even, even playing field. I got <laughs> it. So, so then we we had her, and and it's so funny because this was last year, and she's she's a, a real fucking sweetheart. Like mm-hmm. she really is. She's a fucking sweetheart. Like bless her. I I wish her all the best. She's a real hard worker person, and I don't say this just because she's. She's been on the show. I say this because generally, like, I've talked to her regularly and stuff yeah. like that. Like, it's like, hey, how's it going, man? I saw that you posted this. It's beautiful. And she's like, hey, I heard this. She's a real sweetheart. And when we had her on the show, my my co-host goes, so listen, I got to ask you, um, what's your favorite dildo company? Is it Bad Dragon? Yes, it was. She literally gave him a shout out. And she starts getting excited. She's like, yeah, they got this one. And I'm sitting over here like I've lost control of the conversation. And she goes, you know, Rico, you should come to HentaiCon. And I'm like, what the fuck is HentaiCon? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, exactly, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's exactly what you think it is. And she goes, and we're there. And at the end, we do this thing called Dub the Hentai. And I'm like sitting here going, what the fuck is it's exactly what you think it is. And she's describing it to us all excited. And I was like, I don't think anyone knows about this. Here we are 100 episodes later. It's it's so good. It's so fun because I've never been. But how is it good, bro? Let me let me explain this to you. So it's it's in a like a basketball stadium, like a basketball court sized room. Like it's huge. This room's massive, like a seven hundred person like theater. And I walk in, and there's a line at the bar, and I just see it's just filled, completely full. It's completely full of people my friends they go get their seats i grab some drinks and i sit down and there's five to seven hundred nerds and there's a huge projector and then they come out and then this is the best thing they pulled their shirts up and the whole crowd is just like <laughs> oh my god and i'm 99 percent sure they had pasties on like yeah so you'd be like so i'm 99 percent sure but the crowd is just like oh, 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 yep. oh, oh. boobs and, yeah, 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 and then yeah, dude, and then they do a little bit of an intro. They play a game of like yep. some sort of like a shots and spelling bees, and then they put on a clip from a hentai, and they have random people from the audience come up and they dub it. And I want me and Tyler wanted to do it so bad. <laughs> uh, do you dub like scenes? It's a yeah, it's one scene, and they'll have two different two different groups of people. They'll do one scene twice, and so oh, it's. God. It's silly because some people try to make it like sexy, which is weird. That's the weird one. Yeah, when you, the can't, people make you it... can't make that. Yeah, that's just that. I, we might as well just I hate to say this. We might as well just have a circle jerk at that point. Yeah, like a yeah. 700 people long circle jerk. But like that would be weird. Tyler told me about this story the, about the year before. Mm-hmm. Uh, when this is what kind of sold me on it. We, the year before we're there. The la- it's on the last hentai that they're dubbing. 
and there's a guy who the whole night has just been like holding his phone up recording the screen of the hentai <laughs> just just recording it just being a sweaty gross guy about it a <laughs> sweaty gross guy and then the uh the reveal at the end of it is the lady has a penis and the, and the guy oh! just goes <laughs> No, uh, uh, he gets so mad that he gets up and leaves. It was so good. He got mad at it. He got mad at it. Like he's like, ah, ah, uh, he got up and left. Oh, so he's one of those nerds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm tracking now. Okay, but okay, yeah. but no, that's so. I and then we went to the other thing is we went to the dance party later, and it was the same. Like, well, they're they're dancing up there, and you can give them the dollars. the pole one, the 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 stri- the the stripper party the, pretty much that they set up yeah basically more or less yeah really and it's yeah it's fine dude i mean the friends were drinking we're dancing having a good time well you can and... drink in there yeah oh i've never I, been I, to one i've heard about them and she told us about them but she's like no there's security and there is, people are yeah. told to calm themselves and people mm-hmm. are very nice and i'm like what? they're also I like guess... they're also like f- like five feet in the air so they're not in the pit but they'll walk around oh, but it's okay i no, it's like all stereotypes come from truth, and that's not true. I'm just like, what with nerds, like, yeah, some nerds need to take showers, but like, it was so fun to watch these guys who have ne- probably never been to a strip club have strippers, and they're just like, um, do I, uh, um, here's, uh, here's yeah. fifty dollars, <laughs> like they're just, I don't know what to do, <laughs> like they're they're trying to be so polite, but also they're like they're just vibrating with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Bro, you've never wanted to imagine Chi Chi giving you a lap dance and dropping that thing on you like it's hot? Like, come on yeah. now. <laughs> no, no, I'm down with that. Like, I'm fine with that. Like, <laughs> dude, they're all uh, nice. Another one that uh that we've talked to that she's done some modeling for us is called a uh, uh, Love Space Kitten. Now she's she's a little more um Love Space Kitten. She I don't think she's up for interviews, but she is. She's she's a. Uh, She's a really, really nice gal. Let me show you. And for the people on the Patreon, you'll be able to, to see this. You're going to have an aneurysm. She is super nice, too. Real professional when you ask for pictures. So, yeah, that's Love Space Kitten right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. She, it's, uh, uh, the, the girl from Toy Story. Uh, <laughs> Je- Jesse? Uh, uh, Je- uh, yeah, she does a, a cosplay a uh, cosplay uh about it but yeah. she um yeah she's she's super cool like like her here it is here's her instagram hold on i was pulling on the wrong one let me see right here <laughs> yeah, there it is that's that's love space <laughs> oh okay yeah she I, I don't know how she's not a, a a deviant like i don't know how she's not in like the deviant space and stuff like that it honestly, but, uh, there's politics to everything, so it might just be one of those things where she's like, she just doesn't want to. Well, man, like, here's the thing, though. Like, I think she has a, an OF, an OnlyFans and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and there's so much money in that space right now from, oh, from yeah. what I'm that, hearing. That, that might actually be why she doesn't need to. Probably doesn't need to leave the house, you know? I mean, I, I've seen, I've met a few, I met a few com- female comedians that have a OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And they're like, dude, it's it's so much money. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how though? She's like, doesn't matter. Pick, pick something. She's like, there's mm-hmm. someone who will pay for it. And I'm like, that's just wild to me. Yeah. It's just like, like it's, getting it's, your, your ad. You got to advertise, but you're like, hey, this is yeah. what I got. There's a comic. Um, he's got a podcast. Josh Potter, I think. Mm-hmm. He did he did an OnlyFans as a hairy shoulder model. And he was hairy like, yeah, I, shoulder. His he's got sh- he's got hairy shoulders. So he was a hairy shoulder model, and so he started an OnlyFans as like a goof. Ended up making so much money that he was like, I gotta stop. <laughs> that just this is gonna ruin Whoa. my life. <laughs> but it's I got out offered. There. I'll tell I'll tell you this. I got offered one time by a random dude. Uh, message me on TikTok because uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a cigar guy. I'm a big cigar mm. guy. Like mm-hmm. cigars are like. Been smoking cigars since since Iraq. <laughs> since okay. 2008, I've been smoking cigars, and it's mm-hmm. just, it, it's it's you know how some people they're like, oh, I just want to smoke a joint. Nope, yeah. I just want to smoke a cigar. That's my That's thing. Right? Just look like a badass with a stogie. Well, funny you say that. <laughs> so I had a guy. <laughs> oh, no. on, I had a guy message me on TikTok and on Facebook on my personal Facebook. 
He's like, hey, man, I'll give you I'll give you $300 if you just send me a video of you smoking a cigar. And I'm like, what the fuck? Bro, this went back and forth. It got up to two grand. <laughs> for just for just a 30 second video of me puffing a cigar. Except nothing crazy. He's like, no, nothing crazy. And I was like, nah, man, I'm I'm good. I said no. I said, I, I, I know. I, I know, didn't... bro. No, here's well, the other thing is I uh, saw on the flip side, like I had, there was an older, uh, older gay gentleman that used to do comedy in Bloomington, mm -hmm. uh, Indiana. And one day he says he was joking now, but one day I, I was trying to move to New York and he goes, I'll give you five grand to sleep with me. Whoa! Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like I still live in Indiana. If you're wondering how that story went. Yeah. Like, <laughs> But like, but I've had other dudes be like, "Oh, it's five grand, man. You should have done it." I'm like, no, it, it's not. No, no, it's not about that. Like, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I given, why even, you yeah, I just, it's a thing of like, number one, shit like that, man, is you don't know where that's gonna go. That's the yeah. problem. And again, the argument to that could be, yeah, but you do videos on TikTok. You have thousands of videos. Like, yeah, you're right. But it's, it's different. But I, it's it's very different. And I see if you do something with that, that's that's on you. But for you to ask me for something, I don't know how that's going to be construed. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that money's coming from, mm -hmm. you know. And and as someone who's worked in the federal government in in drugs and immigration stuff and some other stuff that I've done, I've seen how shit can get real complicated real quick. Yeah. I don't know what that guy is. You know, that might be someone with a fake account that wants to use that against me later. For mm -hmm. some reason, which no one mm -hmm. should care, you know, no one should yeah, really no, give a fuck. No one should care, but we we live in yeah. the world we live in. Well, it's know? it's the Midwest, you know, yeah. it's the Midwest where it's cool if you're a stripper. but God forbid if you have an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Is this, isn't that wild, though? It is. It's 100 like, percent. It blows my mind that, that people are like, you, you can go be a stripper, but God forbid if you have an OnlyFans. And I'm like, yeah. I heard someone say that one time and I was like, that's a joke, right? Like, y'all are y'all are playing like. Well, yeah. Well, one of them, you're uh, close to the human and actually in physical, maybe physical danger, and the other one, you're in your living room, safely. <laughs> like what? What? And, oh, and we're mad. We're mad at the the other dude. We've empowered. It's you, we've we've empowered these women too much. I oh, I will say no. this though. I think I think and I I predicted this not predicted this but I, I said this a while back is I think OnlyFans is gonna kill the the pornography industry. I think it's slowly slowly like and when I say pornography industry, I don't mean because OnlyFans could be considered as adult entertainment. I believe yeah. right. Well, what I'm saying I, is I like, remember they uh they they did an announcement like maybe about a year ago they're like we're no more porn on OnlyFans <laughs> no and no everyone was like well that site's dead there's no one and they're like well, immediately we're like well, we're you know why right. You know, well, you know what happened, right? Didn't... Because credit card companies had a large amount of um, investment in OnlyFans because mm -hmm. they they the the payment processing and stuff like that and how you pay is run by okay. those credit card companies. And all right. What happened was is when they announced that the, their stocks went to shit because all that money that they had invested in OnlyFans is going to shit. It's like man. we're gonna be a clean company, and bro, that took literally less than a week. Or like, what? Show the titties for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, like man. you're gonna show your titties. Show your titties for Jesus. Oh my god, that's a shirt. That's a shirt. <laughs> we gotta write that down. Hold on. That's a Ugh. this is what I love about podcasting. You'll sit with somebody talking and then all of a sudden you'll get an idea and then boom, there it goes right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just wild to uh. me, dude. But no, I really do think that it's it's gonna if it continues down like that, like I I mean think about it. What would the point of me going to and this might just be the ignorant side of me because I'm not a big, I'm not a big porn guy. But like, what would be the point of me going to, uh, Pornhub, right, and searching for, searching for something for 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 something specific when I can just yeah. go to an OnlyFans of someone that, I don't know, man, I don't know. It's, I just well, so well, I know, um, because I was doing uh, because you read up, you read up a bunch of stuff. Like I found Adria che Chekov, Chekov. Uh, started out an adult film, and then the one who, who hurt her back, her, hurt her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, which, yeah. Uh, which I made a goof. Something, yeah, yeah, something which, like that. I can't. I don't want to pronounce the last name. I don't want to fuck it up. I, I made a goof about it, and I feel really bad now because I thought it was just like a little injury. Like she got really hurt at 
Yeah. Max? TwitchCon? Yeah, she felt, TwitchCon. She felt, yeah, she at TwitchCon doing the... The foam pit. They didn't put the, the foam in it. The foam pit, and she she fell... Uh, I saw the... Have you seen the video? No, I can't, I'm not big on people getting hurt. When you... Dude, when you see the video, uh, people who know, like, understand body mechanics, yeah. like, when you... It's like when you judo throw someone, right? When you judo mm-hmm. throw someone, you can tell if they're in shock because there's, like, an after shake. Like, they go like this, like, they're in shock, and oh, that's when, yeah. you, when you rip an arm out. But Oof. you see her when she gets hit. She has a moment where you see her like this. And she goes, she she twitches, and that's yeah. not good. Like no. When you see someone get hurt and they have that twitch, that's yeah. like serious, like yeah. that's serious. And apparently, yeah, she 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 can't have kids. I think she had to have like uh, extensive, yeah, yeah. Uh, back surgery. Uh, that that was just it was one of those. It's one of those injuries, dude, that you never really think about. But then you see how bad it can go and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, well, that's yeah. out of all the ways that she could have broken her back. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, I, yeah. Well, <laughs> she has, yeah, you know where I was going with that. I know. Like, I know. Now. <laughs> but um, but she started out as adult film and then she transferred to streaming. I'm sure streaming. also only fans. But it's yeah. like that's the funnel. You know, you start you, you cast the wide net and then you get your the people that you want that will pay directly for you specifically. It's just like it's just like a Patreon. Like honestly, it's just like how a comic, you know, like hey, I do all these things, uh, get the Patreon, come to the live show, buy my teach. Like it's all a funnel of just like getting less broad fans and more specific diehards. I, I, see, I see what you mean, and and it's funny because that's that's a business model. I've I've mm-hmm. actually talked to we have a friend who has a, a Patreon. I don't want to put him out there because he's he doesn't like to like put his info out there but you know on patreon you can people can see how many people are Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then you can you know well he keeps it all private and he has 2900 people at ten dollars a month like i'm no mathematician that's pretty good you do the math on that bro Mm -hmm. you do the math on that tyson that's pretty and one of the things he tells me is he goes bro it took me four years Mm -hmm. to do it and like the number one thing that he was telling me is he goes I used you have to figure out a way where one thing that you do is your business card, right? Like for me, the 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 podcast is like my business card. I love podcasting more than anything. Cause I like I like talking with people one on one and hearing yeah. people's experiences and and sharing. Comedy is a byproduct of that for it to go to my Patreon and to go to my podcast. Mm-hmm. And then everything else that I do just feeds off. Like it's yeah. a funnel. And yeah. that's what people don't. I don't think people really talk about this a lot. People just think like, I'm going to go do, um, I'm going to go do comedy, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm going to improvise everything. Well, that's you know? how I started is I didn't know anything. I, I know you did an open mic and then eventually you were on comedy central. That was all the information. I had. <laughs> just like that. Like open mic. Comedy just, central. Yeah. It's just then question marks and then comedy central, <laughs> but like, and it's just like we talked earlier, you had to learn so much. I, I read some business books. Be, and I'm I'm not even making like I still have a day job, but like I've read all these books and I'm trying to shift into that, like because I because it is another thing you had to learn where the biggest one of the biggest things that I had to get over was like, I am my own brand. Right. Yes, that's a huge thing. Thank you for bringing that up. That's a yeah. huge thing. And everything that you do and you mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. is your brand. Mm-hmm. I Yeah. I, I, that's, that's cool that you get that. Most, it's, most comedians don't get that, by the way. I've had don't. this conversation. I've had this, I had this conversation with a comic that's in LA that's done movies. Oh man. And he was asking me, he goes, Hey, the, uh, the producer asked me if I had an LLC and this has been doing comedy for 10 years. And I go, yeah. bro, yeah, you, you should have an LLC if you're doing comedy and you're getting paid regularly. So that way they don't tax you. You know, as as an employee with a 1099 and yeah. bro, he did not know that he he sat down with with a manager because he got a manager and the manager's like, OK, well, what's your brand? And he's like. I don't know what you're talking about, like for me, like there's certain things and it's so good that you say this and I, I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Mm-hmm. For me, I have certain things that you'll never catch me do because that's the Rico brand, mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. the richer mm-hmm. brand. How do you, how did you figure that out? And what are things that you do? Like me, for example, like you won't catch me smoking, smoking weed. Yeah. Like you won't. Cause it's just not my thing. I don't like, mm-hmm. 
I hate to say this. I'm not a I'm not a, a smoking guy. I don't yeah. like the smell. I hate that it sticks to my clothes. I've had people tell me, no, this and that. I don't give a fuck. I don't like yeah. the smell of it. And I'm a cigar guy too is the problem. I think that's part of what my brand is, you know? Like, like I like my I like my specific bad smoke smell, not yours. Yes, yes. <laughs> but no, absolutely. That's what it is though because to me it's like, and it's hard, man, because when you start becoming like a public figure, like it, this wasn't, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer the question because another thing is, is there's lines in the sand mm -hmm. that people don't get. Like, hey, are you for guns or against guns? To give an example, yeah. are you for marijuana, against marijuana? Are you um, for this or for that? And some of those things are lying in the sand, like where people will leave. And we've seen yep. that with our numbers where once we started, like, um, you know, your first year, nobody takes you seriously. Yeah, I, I hate to say this. Uh, your first year doing something, very few people will take you seriously. But yeah, dude, that's a really interesting thing that you brought up. How do you how do you manage it? And how did you figure that out? I I started to. So it's it's been a bit of a. I'm a slow learner. I'm learning. I'm looking back. I'm like, oh yeah, I could have done this if I read. You know, this is a brand. Do this. But it was like I started paying attention. Like because Jim Gaffigan wrote a bunch of food based stuff. And I was like, okay, he's clean. He does food-based jokes. And I just started looking at comics and like the most successful comics, they have like certain mm. things they talk about. And then I started to think about that as like in joke writing, which was like, okay, well, if their jokes are all clean, it'd be weird. If And then that led to that. And then eventually I just came down to getting my own pseudo like writing mantra, which is big, dumb, fun. I'm kind of a loud guy. I'm not, I'm not stupid, but I'm like, I'm not I'm kind of an idiot. Like I'm the, we're fun to talk to and make it fun don't punch down don't be mean leave politics out of it and it was one of those things that accidentally kind of came through and then i was like oh my brand is big dumb fun and then i started reading business books once i realized like i am i am a brand and i understand why comics have a, like some comics have a really hard time doing that because it feels dirty almost as like as a comic you're like oh it's my job to be you know, I'm out here the truth. I'm a prophet of my own truth. Ha! But is you're not. But you can do that. But the thing is, is like, you you can do that because, like, mm -hmm. dude, I have more. <clears throat> Here's one thing that I don't do. I don't like talking like down uh, about other people. Yeah, we can we can, and this is a really hard line, right? So like roast, right? Like I mm -hmm. enjoy mm -hmm. roast battles. Yeah, like. There's a oh, guy in town friend. with your friend. There it is. There it is. I've, right I've done like I did there a sign is. up for a roast and then my buddy had to drop and they're like, oh, just roast this guy instead. I'm like, no, I'm just being mean to a stranger. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Him. Yeah, that's how I that's how I feel. And don't get me wrong. Like there's a guy in town called uh, Leighton Flat. He runs he runs um he runs some some uh, roast battles and mm -hmm. they're fun. They're fun. I've seen maybe one of them. Yeah. Right. Because like I told you, I've been. Busy with family and injuries and all this yeah. other stuff, which I apologize if you see me doing this a lot. It's just I'm sitting on on a pillow because I had a I had a hematoma removed from my ass cheek. <laughs> so I'm in a little bit of pain, dude. It's been. Yeah, it's did not know how much pain that could cause. But uh, yeah, but no, man, that's the thing is like I don't I don't like talking ill about other people. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Other people do other people are like, oh, well, this person, that this person, this right. And to finish what, what I was saying about the, the roast battles before I go into that, uh, they do well. They they do well yeah. with those battles. Like they sell well and it's the thing, but it's just it's just not my thing. I don't want to be mean towards a stranger, even mm -hmm. though I understand that it's just, you know, we're just it's just a back and forth. Like I yeah. just don't like it. Now with my friends, bro, I'll say some horrible <laughs> shit to my friends. Trust me. I got a friend who's going through a divorce right now, was being an idiot, and I was like, bro, if you don't stop being a dumbass, like we can't be friends. Like, like just <laughs> stop you, being, you know? yeah, bro. Like I'll <laughs> fucking leave you, you know, but it's, it's one of those things. Like, it's like you said, like, I, I just have a hard time doing it. Yeah. It's, just it's not also with roast. It's the hard, the fine line, because like what is okay today might not be okay in five, 10 years. And people can just pull that clip of you just holding a microphone, saying a thing and then being like, do you see what he said? Get him. Like what? But no, it was, you know, yeah, that's that's uh I I've had that happen here with with uh certain things that we said and obviously to me uh context is important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cuz like yeah. You can clip you can clip almost like I'm I'm sure you can go through 150 episodes 
grab a few things and be like, Rico's a racist and mm -hmm. he hates brown people. And I'd be like, you're half right. But, <laughs> you know, like you got to like you got to it's it's just you know what it is, man. And a comic said this the other day. The problem is, is that everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon because everybody's mm -hmm. trying to make it. Yeah. But but you should try to make it with your own brand. Yeah. And time will will attest to it. Like I'm a firm believer if you mm -hmm. do something for for long enough, you'll you'll have and when I say long enough, I mean like you commit to it. Like you learn yeah. from your mistakes, you know, like you mm -hmm. you've been saying about yourself. But I don't feel that a lot of people really have that conversation with themselves. And you've been doing comedy for a while, if I recall, right? Yeah. And I've only gotten semi good like this year. So <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that's sure okay. next year. Yeah. That's but, that's no, okay. I, I, I started uh, about I started messing around with comedy about ten years ago, taking it series about eight years ago, and then it, with that, it's been learning all the other stuff. And I put my first album out this year. You know, like I know people that do an album every two years, which is insane, but they know what they're doing. So it it is a journey, and it's fine to it's that's the thing everyone wants to do it now. Just start doing a little bit now and it builds. It's a snowball rolling down a hill, you know, like you yeah. will get fans. You will get more material. You will get these opportunities, but you have to be honest with yourself. You have to pay attention where you're failing. You have to be willing to like kill your darlings just because I have jokes that I love that don't work. Like, like structurally they're there, but they just, don't connect with the audience or something's missing. You just got to drop them and write another joke. Yeah. And, and that's hard too. killing your, your ego like that, especially when you, when you bomb. Yeah. Like I always tell people I would, I would, if, if someone was like, listen, you will never bomb again, but you have to, you're going to get tapped by every white belt at jujitsu class every day, <laughs> but you will never bomb again. And I literally was like, I will fucking take that. Cause I would rather get it have a white belt choke me than bomb in front of a hundred people. It's, <laughs> it's bombing is so crushing hard. It's, but it's, I think I usually get a lot of good growth out of a bomb because it forces me to like, Oh, why did I bomb? Okay. Mm -hmm. did, did, was I being lazy? Did I get too drunk? You know what I mean? It's all these things to like look back. And honestly, some of the best comedy advice that I was ever given was this, uh, this guy named Troy Davis told me, he goes, after you do your set ask yourself what did i like and what didn't i like hmm. and just by it's like the simplest form of it because if you go well i liked this so go for that i didn't like this okay well avoid that it's a very dumbed down version of it but it's like i like that i got big laughs on this joke okay write more jokes <laughs> you know i don't like that i bombed okay write more jokes <laughs> you know like yeah read the room <clears throat> that's that's pretty much the that's why I always say that uh, a lot of the the advice in in martial arts and in comedy goes hand in hand. It's kind of similar. It's like just go do more. Yeah. Just go do it again. Yeah. Just go go fucking do it again. Like there's nothing I, else. I have a I have a friend in Sarah uh, in Thailand. They they moved. Uh, my friend Sarah moved to Thailand to fight uh, Muay Thai professionally, like to learn and grow. And you we know talk. who. I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Because there's a team in Thailand that's it's uh they're they're fucking legit and they they hold tryouts once a year. And if you make it, everyone who's been in that team has either make it an Invicta, mm -hmm. UFC or something. I think and it's I, I can't say for certain, but she said like she had a friend that was like, I can get you uh I can get you a tryout and she's like, I'm not ready for it yet. Like she's smart enough to know probably not to jump yeah. the not jump like not get out because there's another great piece of advice G gary goldman gave which mm -hmm. was it's better to be seen two years too late than two seconds too early Ooh, that's fire holy yeah. fuck say that again say that again it, it's better to be seen two years too late than two seconds too early and it really is because holy if fuck, you that's good yeah because if you're bad people are gonna remember you're bad even if you got better Two seconds later, they're still gonna go. Oh, I he was bad. Like, but if you're good for two years and you don't quote unquote like make it or blow up, you're still gonna have a good two years. You're still gonna be yeah. improving and growing and you build you build upon it, man. And like the thing is, is is it's comedy to me. 
to me, what comedy is, is being able to express something that I took too serious for too long and mm-hmm. then just fucking shit on it. <laughs> I I forgot to have fun for a whole year. I was oh, so really? In- yeah, I was like, I got. I will write the. Well, I just got so wrapped up, and like, I will write the perfect joke. I will. My jokes will be so good. My joke, but then that took all of me out of it. It was just I was so focused on the words, and trying to like write a joke, write a joke, not be a entertainer, not being a comedian. It was just like this is the. I will figure out how to, and then the jokes wouldn't work as well as I wanted them to. So I'd be really hard on myself. And how'd you catch like a, it? I just how'd looked you... back and I was like, I'm not having fun. Like, this is my dream. Why am I not enjoying it? And then taking a step back, I was like, oh. Oh, I I had a lot of, I, I was doing, I was doing better when I was just kind of not, not fucking around, but when I had like a topic and like some, like some punchlines and just playing yeah. with that versus <clears> being like, this is perfect. I have written everything so good. Yeah, I see. But, I see what you mean. That can be nerve wracking too, because especially when you're, that's why I say, like, when you were telling her you had a daytime job, I go, bro, I know almost every comic that I know, except maybe a handful that are doing it now, like, regularly. Like, James Camacho, who's doing fucking huge rooms and shit like that, and he's been on, uh, he's been an extra and doing a lot of shit. Most comics have, like, a daytime job that they do, and it's normally related to comedy, too. Yeah. Like, normally, I, uh, like, it's wild. Yeah. Actually, I shout it to Bottoms Up. I work at uh, I work at Bottoms Up, and I do their warehouse stuff, but I also work with a couple other comedians and I help put on together, put together comedy shows that are just all the employees going to a venue that has the bottoms up system. I have learned uh, a little bit of the marketing I've learned, like I help with all these things there that have helped me as a comic, but it's, it is, it is related. Also, they're really understanding if I'm like, Hey, I, I'm gone Wednesday through Sunday. So they're like, okay, we'll see you Monday. See, Great. that's that's the good that's the good thing right there. Another thing is also, I don't know if you've thought about this, but we we have a uh, two sponsors, like Thorn Supplements, which mm. shout out to Thorn. They have their supplements are, are fucking amazing. Probably some of the best supplements I've taken in my life. Like clean as fuck, no no issues whatsoever. Um, and it's like regular stuff like vitamin C, vitamin D, potassium, okay, cool. like really good. Which uh, you can go to www.thorn.com slash you slash Regal Podcast to get 20% off. And then um, our new sponsors, which we actually, this will be the first time we announce it on the podcast, is a Bloom Medicinals. It's a mm-hmm. dispensary that is headquarters in Colorado. They have some amazing products. They're super veteran friendly. Dude, they give 25 to 35% off to veterans. Wow, that's that's yeah, really, bro. That's, really that's good. fucking, that's a chunk, bro. That's a tw- 35% oh, wow. off, bro. That's a 20 listen that's a $15 bag of edibles. Yeah. If you and buy the cheapest edible, bro, 15 bucks. Yeah, 15 and they could have just done 10% and you're like, oh that's cool, 10%. 10 nah, bro. Nah, bro. That's 30, why that's, that's why we lot. partnered up with them. That's why I partnered up with them and one of the things what I wanted to tell you is one of the things that we do is we we write jokes and we'll we'll put it in a meme and give it to their marketing team. Oh, wow. That's it's not a good bad way to make money. It's a good way to make money. Yeah. It's a good way to make money. I wanted to throw that your way because yeah. with beer companies, what, dude, this is where I foresee things happening with the next generation of comedians that are coming. And remember this, this, because this is going to happen. A lot of people are going to listen to that advice and they're going to go, they're going to go to their jobs and they're going to be like, hey man, can I write some jokes for your marketing and just give them to you? And you tell me what happens? Because that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And they posted some stuff and it was good. And then we showed them some stuff for like merch and stuff like that. We just gave it to them. Like I'm not- yeah. You know, our our relationship is pretty good. Like they're gonna be helping us. We're gonna be doing some shows and um we're gonna be doing some some shows with, with Bloom that nice. are, are gonna be yeah. yeah. I uh so I'll I'll let you know because Bloom has uh where are you at again? I'm in Indianapolis, but I can be anywhere. Okay. Uh, I'll, Indiana. I'll, yeah. I'll let you know. I'll let you know because nice. they, they got a they got a lot of a lot of stuff that they wanna do. And dude, that's that's the thing that comics I don't think like I think a lot of times comic don't sit down and think outside the box. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wish like more like top tier comics would like give people like that sort of, because I got that idea from another comedian that that's what he does. He's literally sold, like he'll write out like a commercial. He gave it to them for free. And then they started giving him products and Mm -hmm. then they put him in marketing on a paid position. And now they just pay him to write stuff and they take it. 
it's yeah it's a lot of a lot of showing people what you're worth because there's a lot of there's a lot of people a lot of noise out there and, and people like helping their friends and if you become their friend by helping them out for free they're more likely to help you out yeah and that's that's my whole thing is like i i i want to associate myself with brands that are doing good that i know or i've talked to or i've met the guy who owns it all the way to mm-hmm. the dude that runs the shop you know mm-hmm. here and 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 i think that the the marijuana crowd and the beer crowd is is going to blow up in the next upcoming years bro cuz i think Especially we've been at war. marijuana crowd yeah yeah and like we've been at war for 20 fucking years bro you know like let's 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 bring back the roaring 20s and the yeah. the, the no, sipping no, no. Mission, 30s. mission accomplished mission accomplished Remember, yeah we had the we, banner. We, had a banner. we lost yeah we have it <laughs> listen i got an award that says that i was there bro like <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. But uh, I'm going to have to, we're going to have to start wrapping up. I'm going to have to get out of here in a minute. Nah, brother. That's all good, man. You've been, Ugh. you've been a fucking hoot and I'd love to have you back whenever you, you, oh, you'd like to, to man. Yeah. Uh, can you do me one small favor? Can you give everybody the deets of where to find you, where they can find everything? I know we talked about it in the beginning, but I also know you have some upcoming shows also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, You can find me personally, uh, everything at Tyson Cox comedy, um, TikTok, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all this stuff. Uh, and then if you look up nerd news, um, it's got a red, it's like a red and yellow logo. So look up nerd news, nerd news network, nerd news, Tyson, we're getting that we're getting our website finished up and our SEO on point. So, uh, but yeah, if you're in the Indiana area, we're doing a live D and D game at the white rabbit, uh, January 18th, we're already selling tickets. So, uh, get them now. Uh, cause I'm trying to sell out the rabbit cause I love that theater. How do you do that? Can you explain how you? Because I love playing D and D, but I play I play myself. I pretty much made an assassin grappler that speaks languages. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a bit of truth in your characters. I think. Any oh good fuck characters, yeah, there is. always always a little bit of truth. Um, but I've I've been so like I said, I've been playing for years and years and years, and then the pandemic hit, and I had all these comic friends that were like, I want to play D and D, but no one would run it. So I was like, okay, I'll run it. And I ended up running, I think, like four games a week during the pandemic, Uh, like sometimes twice a day. Like I was running a ton of games. And so I just got pretty good at running. And then I just kept, sorry, I just kept running games. And then I was like talking just to with comics about how much fun we were having. And we were like, this could, this could be a show because it is D and D is innately, it's a storytelling thing. So it's whatever vibe you want it to be. And I, I've done script writing and stuff. So like, I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, we just do uh, each, like, it'll be a monthly show. We'll be like, that'll be the A plot with a B plot just throughout the throughout the year, throughout the season. There's a B plot that eventually kind of gets more and more important. Oh, and we just, yeah, get random. I like, I like to I like. sit in on one of those sometimes. Send me a link sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, like so we're going to, the goal is either to uh, live stream it once the venue, I think the venue has the capabilities but they want to see it first since it's a weird concept for them yeah but we're gonna we're gonna record everything and then eventually release it like as a show like just to watch and hopefully slide that into another podcast that's weekly but that's a little down the line but yeah my advice to comics get plans start setting goals start doing stuff uh and find your niche oh that's a good one that's a good one because um, with where we're just about going around, we're hanging out flyers for the show at all the like the dice shops and some coffee shops and like nerd shops around town. And they're like, people are like, dude, do you guys want to do something here? Like, we'd love to have something here. Like, there's a, people are hungry for it. We are we're actually doing a uh, Magic the Gathering set release party. We're doing an hour of stand up and then we're all playing Magic the Gathering after the show. Bro, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're doing it at a comic shop who is going to get. Like every time you buy a ticket, they're gonna give you a free pack of the cards that come out. Like, Ooh, it's out man, there. It's you just, and I gotta talk more shit. It's, that sounds it's, dope. It's gonna be so fun because it's an hour show, which is easy. It's gonna be me and three other comics. We just kind of hit it real hard, and then we are just gonna play Magic: The Gathering for an hour. Like it's gonna be, it's out there. It's just find what you enjoy, and then figure out from there. Like that's honestly kind of where all this came from. Dude, that's. That's pretty dope, man. And I appreciate yeah. you coming back, dude. I'd love to have you back sometime. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. Please, yeah. Let, I'll let I'll let you know when my schedule clears up a little bit. I appreciate that, man. 
Yeah. Thousand Cox, everybody. Go give that dude a like. Give him a follow. Love everything that he does, man. (laughs) Stick around, brother.